Okay, uh, it's Chris here and Derek. We're working on the 52 uh, Studebaker truck with the Dakota chassis swap. Uh, we're getting ready to, well, not finally put the put the brake put the brake system together, but Derek finished off the shaft. Um, it's got a flat spot. We'll show you that's why there. It's got threaded threads on both sides put an end cap on it so it doesn't move uh, then he's made some uh, bronze uh, bushings that's just for space spacers we haven't uh, it's still we still have to uh, oh. grind this a bit take off there's and paint it all it's we'll do that once we lift the cab up but that won't be for, we don't need to do that for a while, but we'll, we'll put it together and uh, show you uh, basically how it works. Oh, well, before we do that, we'll take a look at the, we, we took the, the uh, heads and the intake off the engine. Cylinders look good. There's one weird one. All the cylinders have a little bit of a ridge on them. Not a whole lot. This one has no ridge at all. <laughs> and we also found out the, the spark the spark plug was quite fouled on there. So I don't know if it was fouled uh, for quite a while uh, and wasn't wasn't sparking. But yeah, this there's no ridge on here. And the other thing, the other option we thought is maybe someone rebuilt the block. Well, it has it has been rep uh, apart. But uh, if they sleeve that one cylinder, I don't know because we actually Derek mic'd it. And it's quite it's basically factory factory bore and there's no it's not like someone took a ridge reamer and took the ridge out it's factory it's pretty close to factory it's more factory than the other <laughs> all the other uh so i don't know uh the connecting rods are connected to there so the piston did move up and down um also the crank someone uh <laughs> took a pipe <laughs> branch to it uh we found there's uh, quite a bit of end play. There's over 30 thousandths end play on there. So yeah, that's that's a problem. So basically the main bearings are out of there. Uh, lifters came out perfect. They look good, but new lifters, new push rods. We're not gonna use all uh, that old crap. So, uh, so yeah, we'll... Uh, Start putting this shaft together. And basically we made it so you can just have to line up this flat spot. We got a set screw here. I think I put it in the right way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's two different ways. Oh, you gotta flip it. Flip it? Yeah. Okay. If the short one goes, yeah, it might work the other way, but yeah. not. But you gotta put the uh, yeah. This goes on. Yeah. This goes on. Got. Yeah. I found out. How did I do that before? Nope. Not like that. There we go. Okay, and where's the, uh, where's the brake pedal? Oh, the brake, I left that one in the cab. Oh yeah, I found it on the seat that I gotta oh, get yeah. out of there one of these days. And you got the caps. I'm not gonna bother hooking up the, uh, the clevis pins because it's all going to have to come apart. 
I, I did that. Oh, okay. I did tap it a bit. Yeah. Okay, uh, you got the caps. Yeah. Here's one. This is... This is for the, uh... That's by the driver's door, that one. Okay. Basically, yeah, Derek made a little bronze, uh... Cap. Basically, it's a thrust plate, almost. And the other one's on the welder. On the welder. Oh, yeah. Let's see if I can do this blind. Maybe not. Probably put it on for if you can't. I just let the pedal hang. Yeah. Probably would help if we take off the tire. Oh, probably. There we go. Um, but you get the gist of it. We're not going to tighten everything up yet. We don't. Oh, that's just interfering. And if you can get in there with the car, we did put little grease nipples there and right there so we can uh, gr grease the shaft so that's basically what our brakes are going to look like our brake system yeah. and we've had the uh the clevis pins hooked up and everything works good we have the the hole is pretty good. We this has to be filled in, but uh, we cut two holes. I just decided to go uh, a little mim minimalists on the the axis ports. This one was factory, so I decided oh, I'll just make another hole there and one hole there, so you can get your fingers in here. And there we go. That's easy, and then you can just take a screwdriver in here, pop that off. That's the 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 rear brakes, which is a small portion, only about that much. The re, the fronts are over here. It's got the bigger reservoir. You can get ac access to that. Oop, I just dropped it. Oh well. And then the factory came up with uh, those on the floor, so I'll just reuse one of these, make a couple more, and. That'll uh, complete the uh, the bottom or the brake system. We still haven't. Uh, we're not going to plumb the lines yet. We're still waiting for our uh, brake uh, tool to show up. We had one. It, it was the raw. It came defective, so we had to send it, send it back. So now we have to get another one, but. And we're waiting for a couple more brake brake line components, but uh, other than, it's coming together fine. Uh, all that seems the brake system is gonna seems to work. Um, the next thing we probably I'm gonna do is start working on the floor, getting the once we get the steering column, we're gonna go get a steering column tomorrow. Once we get that, we'll I'll start filling in that area and cleaning up some of the welds and. And that and fixing rust on the floor so that's my next thing to do and we're gonna be probably pulling the crank out soon and sending that to get ground and start working on motor stuff or getting the parts in basically and then once all the parts in then we'll basically rebuild it uh, bore it out in, here um we'll get it we'll get the ground crank ground at a at piston ring or somewhere at a machine shop but then uh we'll bore it here we'll that'll be uh a video in itself manual or not manually boring but boring <laughs> boring <laughs> engine block at home we've done it uh well twice now my flathead was bo bored uh here 
Was it in this garage? Yeah. Yeah, it was bored in this garage. So, uh, yeah, and it's been uh, running great ever since. So, and that had really crappy lights back then too. Yeah, <laughs> but it uh, worked perfectly. So, uh, yeah. So enough rambling on. Um, we'll get the work and we'll show you some progress. Okay, uh, so we're. Uh, did some rust repair. We didn't uh, film it because that's just the way crap happens. But we started cutting out the floor. There was a, just a little bit of rust in the floor. And then we found out that the mount, the cab mount, was worse than we thought. So we basically braced the cab up with a jack, cut out the cab mount, and then I made this other cab mount. Um, it was just a box box steel and I cut the top off um, and that will support that so we got it supporting the cab right now there's my there's our brake system uh, but then now we're just gonna fill in fill in the gaps that we cut out on the floor that's where it was, it was rusted along this seam so we decided just to cut it out and redo it and then we had to go further in for the mount so we got that done and we also did a little bit of <laughs> removal of the rocker uh, i found i was digging in in here in the through the rust holes and i found all this so we decided uh yeah even though the rockers they look good uh they weren't factory I, we don't think so. So someone just made them, put them over. They look good, but they're it was rusted underneath. So we decided to cut it out, and uh, yeah, now we have to deal with uh, that. So basically, what we're gonna do is get rid of all this crap, keep this, and then if you can see here, it's basically just a box steel. So we're gonna get box steel. We don't have any put it there in there weld it up and fix some of the make a bead because there's this bead is these two beads are perfect it's just where this panel connected the dark dirt got into here and rusted this bead so we're gonna have to probably duplicate that bead but that shouldn't be a problem but uh, yeah, we probably won't do that today because we don't have the box steel to do that. But we're gonna definitely cover that hole in the floor. Or at least that's the attempt to do that. So we'll get to it and we'll show you a bit. Hey, we just made a little uh, panel there. Derek's welding the top part in. Still got another hole below it. And a couple more pieces to do. Had to make another piece for uh, attaches to the cab mount because the cab mount, the top is curved. As you can see, well, not curved, but sloped from here. And it, there's a flat spot that's uh, the cab mount sits here, and there's a flat spot, spot that goes there and at the bottom. So we just have to make that just to support the floor. And on this side, it's a little bit crusty, and lighting is crappy. But this side, we probably just leave it alone. The other side, this was all rotten in there. Guess they didn't seam seal it from factory and the seam, the spot wheel seam got to spread out. This is this rocker. It looks fine and dandy, but this is, this is just a piece of box sheet metal that they put over. And you can see here, they, it's been brazed right on top of this bead. And there's a rust hole there, and a rust hole there. That's where dirt, it's not sealed in there, so dirt just gets filled in there. But that, they made this out of galvanized, just sheet metal. 
it's a sheet metal galvanized box they just put in there we were gonna leave it but now that it's all dirt in there we gotta take that out and redo that so we'll let Derek continue to spark away and we'll make some more panels Okay, Derek's just welding up some uh, holes. There was a bunch of, they put drain holes in the uh, floor. So we're gonna weld those up. And we've uh, finished welding the floor patches on the driver's side. This has all been replaced. This panel, this is where, right underneath, or right on top of where the uh, cab mounts was that we replaced, so we, it was rusted there, so we replaced all that. This seam right here, that it was all rusting and and peeling up, so we cut that out. And it's not ground or anything; it's all rough. Then we started welding in some holes in the firewall and floor. Modified uh, this so one of these plates will fit flush still on ground and we got I made a plate for that just have to drill a couple holes weld nuts on the bottom of the floor this plate will just either weld up or seam seal it and Derek even cut the hole for the uh, shifter welded up some holes in there the floor overall the floor is in pretty good shape or what it is yeah the last truck Kevin's truck we did uh, we replaced all this and some of that because it was sides. yeah both sides because it was it was ru rusted but this isn't too bad curious thing is yeah the gas tank original gas we don't have the original gas tank the original gas tank sits here that's where uh, the line goes out and that's where you, the filler net goes in, but there is nothing to hold the tank in. There's no bolts, no bolts, no, nothing that looks like it had a rubber mount or anything. There's nothing on the floor. These are the cab mount bolts, so that's not it. But no bolts on the out back. It's weird. So if you know uh, how original, ga well, we don't have original gas tank, but we'll... We're just going to make the Chevy one do, hopefully do. Hopefully it fits. Okay, uh, we dug out the tank that we uh, thought was going, came from uh, like a 64 Chevy truck that we pulled out. It's definitely not from that truck. It was just obviously sitting in there. Because uh, this is where the uh, float goes. So this is meant to sit... that in a truck or in a van so someone just shoved it in there uh, so this is not gonna work at all we can't even use it because even the filler neck here is way too high for there uh, we don't want to screw with that also it won't fit with the seat so we also figured out that uh, Studebaker trucks did not have the gas tank behind the seat uh, they just had a pipe going down and in and down through there. So they had a under under the floor gas tank uh, in 52. So they must have been the first ones. So what we're deciding, well, well what we decided to do is we got all this room here. Uh, we're instead of. Uh, uh, going to the junkyard and trying to measure up one and bring five of them home and maybe one of them is going to fit, especially in the winter we're having. That's not going to happen, so we're going to make one. Uh, obviously not today or tomorrow or the next day, but uh, we're going to make one. It's going to be roughly that shape, except longer. Maybe square, maybe a little round, who knows. <laughs> Uh, we have the room. Uh, 
we've made a gas tank once before and it worked perfectly no leaks so we have we're batting 1000 on that so 100 percent success rate on building gas tanks so we feel pretty confident uh so we're gonna do that uh so i think that's all that we're gonna we're gonna end this video here because we rough welded up the floor it needs to be ground that's boring stuff we need to clean the whole interior anyways and grind down the floor the old paint and stuff we'll leave that for kevin he likes to do dirty dirty work like that so he'll be watching this and you're doing it uh, and also like to thank uh all you subscribers we just uh hit we just passed nine or nine thousand subscriber mark so we're we very much appreciate your uh subscribing and obviously keep telling your friends and your co-workers and people on the streets uh can't hurt so thanks for watching and we'll get back to this uh studebaker shortly and with rust repair painting grinding motor work gas tank gas tank work brake plumbing work all that good stuff fun stuff to watch so keep watching and may the force be with you